GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Govi, a vernacular edutech brand, skilling everyone everywhere. Hi, Sarah. Hello. Welcome to Galata Plush. And uh, you know, when Simba and Kedarnath released around the same time, you said that I got the films easily because I belong to the industry, uh, but I will have to see how the audience reacts and accepts me. It's finally their decision. So now, five years later, do you feel that acceptance has come? For sure. Okay. I think that. Um, I'm only here because of that. Okay. And uh, now it's just my duty and joy to just keep going. And that means picking up projects that you think you like or picking up things that you think will work with the audience? I don't think that we can judge what will work with the audience. The audiences are constantly evolving as are their choices, as are our own choices. Right. So the only thing to really do is to do honest work that comes from the gut because that stands the test of time instead of a calculation that may or may not go southwards. Right. So what was sit in the gut that made you say, Evatan Mere Vatan is, is something that I want to do? Of course, there's a story, there's this unusual, you know. It's unusual. Yeah. Um, it's a new way of telling a freedom fighter story. Yeah. It's also a different freedom fighter story. There's, um, But I think the answer to your question, honestly, is that I felt a very visceral, emotional reaction towards the climax of the film. Mm -hmm. I found myself crying during the narration, which hadn't happened since Kedarnath. And I realized that maybe that was just the purity of the content. Okay. Yeah. That was it. So, you are a narration person, you do, or do you like to read screenplays? I prefer narrations, I think. Okay. Is that because you get the director's intent out a little more clearly? It allows me to shut my eyes and visualize when I'm hearing. That's, that's interesting. I've never heard that before. Okay. I like that. So, when they're saying something, you kind of imagine it. Yes. Okay. Yes. I thought you, you being a reader, you'd like to read the script. I do like to read. Okay. But I prefer hearing scripts. So right. I right. Think. Right. Now, uh, as someone who's still in your 20s, uh, what's your favorite old movie? Uh, Hindi movie? Old Hindi movie, there's so many. How can I name and one? I'm, Silsala. Made, I'm asking in the context of this film that we're talking about. Silsala, but that's not the answer. That's in 80s, this context. okay. That's how that's old probably. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. I going further back might be a little I mean I could. Uh Dag. Okay. Now there are two kinds of period filmmaking in Ahmad Vatan Mere Vatan. One of course is the the fact that it is set in a particular period, which is the pre independence era. The other thing is also, culturally, it is a bit rooted in the Hindi filmmaking of the time. Like, there is this line that, that comes out that says, Sai hone ka daam dad se chukana padta hai. That's like, uh, some, you know, that's, that's the kind of crafted line that, that today's movies sometimes do not have because we like, today we like movies that speak naturally, the way people speak naturally. Also, I don't even think if that's an emotion. I don't know if it's a natural or an unnatural way of speaking. Sorry to interrupt you. But I, I also feel that us zamane mein shayad ye baatein ho sakti thi. Aaj kaun hi karega? Yeah. Agar dard hoga mujhe, to mein sahi cheez nahi karungi shayad yeah, aaj. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it's about whether that's the spoken language or not. It's about whether that's the spoken language today or not. Or if it's the felt thought today or not. Right. And I don't so think it is. So how was it slipping into the both parts of this? One is the, the time period of, of this and as well as the cultural spirit of, of that kind of movie making? It was a privilege. Um, it was very joyous. I don't. I think that that's the joy as an actor, to be able to live a life that's not yours. Okay. And cannot be because we're free citizens and the death penalty is not a real tangible threat today. Right. So, I won't be able to live that time. So, I definitely think it was... Um, it also made me look at... Maybe because Usha's character and her journey is something that I very objectively admire right. and have so much respect for that it was kind of strange to go on to the set in a way because I don't take Sara seriously but because I'm Sara and like she's cool but Sara's portraying a character that I have so much respect for right that somewhere in the middle of that that gratitude and respect kind of all just I don't know what happened right right no but in a manner of speaking uh a biopic is the story of a person. You could also call Love Ajkal a biopic of the person that you played, in a sense. Because yeah. it's it's technically they're not really a person, but they are you are following a graph, right. an emotional through line. So is there another 
a fictional film that you've done where you've fallen hard for the person that you played as much as you did for this film? I think Rinku from Atrangire. Yeah. Was that also one of the... Uh, I like that movie a lot and especially the soundtrack and just the whole conceit of who the Akshay Kumar character is. And uh, was that one of the tougher things to do for you? Uh, yeah. Psychologically get into that, that zone? I think so. I think it was um, I, it was just overall different to anything I had done right. so far. And I think that's always the fun. You know, it's about doing different things that you haven't done. Like, you know, a song like Chaka Chak that I'm doing pretty much on my own. I'd done a song with Varun before, I'd done a song with Ranveer before, but right. this was my song. Right. You know, um, that was nice. To have a Bihari dialect was nice. So you do different films for different reasons, but so long as you get an opportunity to learn, learn grow, unlearn, that's the job, right? Right. An actor told me once that one of the difficult things to do is to convince the audience that X is happening, while actually Y is what the, the character is thinking about to kind of, and you know what I'm talking about right. in terms of Atrangiria, right? So uh, was that the tough thing about the movie, one of the tough things about the movie? Honestly, Anandji just made the movie seem very easy. Easy? Okay. Yeah. He just made it seem very easy because I think what makes Rinku connect, if at all, is there's a lot of uh, simplicity in who she is. It's not like she thinks she's going through this huge thing. Right. So the less complicated, the less cerebral and the more instinctive it was, the better he would have felt it would be. Right, right. And what about Usha? How did Kanan explain the character to you as in like life? I think he understood and I understood and he understood that I understood that we cannot mimic the stakes of 1942. Right. We can't really feel that world. So the only thing we can do is try to do justice by respecting her soul. Right. Which is why I got into talking to you about how I respected Usha's character more than any character I've played thus far. Because that was my way into her. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about how do you relate to this character. You don't relate to a freedom fighter. You aspire to be like them. So the idea was, what are the things in this character that I aspire to be like and how can I find those within myself? Right. And I think while portraying those themes and those personality traits, I truly found disjointed specks of them somewhere in me. Right. And that was really nice. Can you name one trait that, that you kind of really wished for? The ability to not unhear your own voice. Nice. That's very important, okay. especially in today's day and age, you know. Apni awaz, you should know. It should echo in your own ears. You right. decide what you want to do with it with the help of the brain, that's fine. But you should know, like, your, there, there should be a visceral reaction to things more than there is. Right. You're, today. You're, actually, that sounds a lot like acting because you have to filter out so much of the noise and, and stay core to the profession because you do live in a profession where there's so much noise around yeah. you. You know, like, uh, I just saw this piece of news today that, that Vikrant Masse uh, thought that because you're a star kid, uh, your priorities would be hair and makeup and, and kind of he characterized you very superficially and then he realized you were, he was wrong and then he apologized to you or whatever. But what are your priorities? To do honest work from the heart and soul. Right. And now five years down the line, do you feel that that's happening, yeah. begun to happen? It had happened, it stopped happening, it's happening again. Oh, nice. That's the truth. Can you say when it stopped happening? Let it go. Let it go. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Govi, a vernacular edutech brand, skilling everyone everywhere. <laughs>